Hello and welcome to High School Soccer on WOSN. Alongside Mitch Monfort, I'm Evan Skilleter. Excited to be with you for early season soccer on WOSN. And today we are in Elida as Wasion and Botkins face off in the first game of a doubleheader. We'll see Elida and Bluffton later on. But Mitch, excited to be with you early season. Beautiful weather. We got a little breeze here. No rain in the forecast and we're underway. Yes, sir. Absolutely excited about this uh, opportunity to come here and watch some great soccer uh, early in the season and see what we have. And Botkins wearing the black uniforms. They start with the balls. We get an early cross into the box. Knotted in the air and knocked away. Now, Wasion not wearing, well, they do have numbers on their jerseys, but super hard to see from up here. So we'll do our best to keep get you the numbers throughout the match. But they do start with Brody Balzer, Eli Delgado, Seth Reeker, Manuel Gante, Benicio Torres, Bo Reeder, Reese Pauly, Clay Soltis, Dominic Barajas, Colin Minetti, and Braden Vajan. Botkins, on the other hand, start with Brant Metz, Carson Motter, John Smock, Reese Asselage, Ryland Paul, Jack Stein Key, Keegan Thorpe, Connor Butcher, Noah Butcher, Noah Grevy, and Evan Greaves. Early corner coming from the far side as Botkins lines up with nearly everyone on the edge of the box. Now they make their run, cross into the box. Ball hits the turf, still live, dangerous one. And here's your shot blocked by Wasion. Mitch, early action for Botkins as they do a nice job getting numbers forward, getting into the box. A couple early opportunities, but nothing too serious for Wasion to deal with. Yes, sir. They did an excellent job of putting pressure on them and keeping them in their uh, defensive half. And now see if they can keep them there. Wasion trying to counter a nice ball on the far side as they work their way up the right side, but no one really there in support. Botkins gets all four defenders back to the edge of the box. And still some work to do. Again, those numbers tough to see from up here. They're basically white numbers with light, what do you say, light red outline? Sure, a tough, tough trim to read, to say the least. I mean, if we can't, tough to make out who's who and, uh, you know, on either team right now. Broadcaster's nightmare, PA guy's <laughs> nightmare, no doubt about it. But we'll have a corner for Wasion. Two teams really don't get opportunities to play each other often, but nice to find this middle point in Elida. Great facility here, as we always say. When we come here, we, we love Elida. Great spot for high school soccer. Ball sent right to the middle, but grabbed by the goalkeeper. No problems there. Sure, he did an excellent job get, going out and getting that ball, and now a uh, good transition. Nice little pass roll out to his uh, a forward and see what they get here. That was Carson Motter, the goalkeeper. Now Botkins trying to come up the right side. That's Jack Steinke. Oh, good double team right there. Way to keep him on the edge, and let's see what happens here. Steinke knocked it off the leg of Clay Soltes. Now throws it in, kind of a sidewinder throw in. Did get it up over his head, so it is legal, and play continues as Wasion controls possession in the defensive third. And a lot of times, Mitch, you see early on in a match, teams kind of feeling each other out. You see a lot of action in the middle of the field and uh, not too many great opportunities as we've seen so far. Sure, it's going to take a little while for them to get their legs underneath them, figure out what the other team's trying to do to them, how do they counter it. You know, we're just they're early in the season as well, so that even makes it harder on a coaching staff to figure out who put where, what, what formation. Uh, you know, just trying to figure out all the little bugs and see how they can, you know, use their skill sets against the other team. And the Trojans now working it up the middle of the field. A nice job nice by defense. the holding midfielder nice. there. I think that's number four. Nope, it's not. <laughs> anyway, again, we'll, we'll do our best. Oh, good pass out wide. Way to find the space. Ball back inside, but behind its target as it's knocked away, but only as far as the midfield. Wasion, far side. Doing an excellent job keeping them on the width of the pitch and, uh, you know, not really in a threatening position. Now into the box. Across comes far post. Touched by the keeper. Up in the air. Still some trouble. Botkins finally able to get a foot on it, trying to clear it out, and we'll have a foul yes, sir. on the far side. Good work there from number four. That's Brant Metz drawing the foul and a free kick coming up for Botkins, and they play it short. 
nice quick short piece see what they can put it together try to counter them real quick oh there we go great touch by john smock smock around a defender puts that shoulder down sends it toward goal but the goalkeeper right there nice positioning by the keeper that's a nice shot off the outside of his foot see if he could get that into the far post, and now uh, the goalie did an excellent job playing those angles. And that's a freshman goalkeeper for Wasion, Brody Balzer, with the first save of the game. Ball out for a Wasion throw. Again on that far side, it seems like they're favoring that right side as they work it into the box. Maybe a shot, it's knocked down by the keeper. Follow up attempt. Blocked nicely there by Ryland Paul. And another one sent into the box, knocked down and out for a corner. Yeah, so they're doing an excellent job applying pressure on the right side of that pitch. And I mean, obviously that's where they, they feel comfortable playing right now. And maybe they scouted and found, uh, you know, they like that area on the uh, left side of that defense. So we'll see if they keep playing it that way or they start swinging the ball the other direction. Three men in the box, one on the edge, two on the edge rather. So this one's sent. Up, headed toward goal, but too high and out. By the way, our scoreboard tonight presented by Charles River in Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio, is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Up the right side go the Trojans, but it crosses the line and out for a throw. It's easier to read on the near side as it looks like Clay Soltis will throw this one in. A little, a little contact there, not enough for a foul. Yes, sir. Definitely, they were definitely fighting for position and ended up going the uh, the way of Wasion. Let's see where the pressure goes here. Oh, found a back post. Oh, good opportunity. And they do have some size there in the box. You can see the height of. Uh, well, the guy on the ball right there is, uh, went just over his head, but if they can work that ball outside, they definitely have an aerial presence. Yes, sir. We just talked about how they were forcing the ball a lot on that right side. The first opportunity to the left, played it back across to the right and had a decent opportunity. Uh, pretty good look there. A little too much on the far side for Wasion as it's knocked away by the Trojans. Nice connecting pass there. Taking the space. Straight up the middle. Redskins now on the edge of the box. They'll knock it outside looking for a cross. Nice look oh. as the give and go finds Wasion on the far side and still kind of playing around as this ball's dangerous in the box. The shot and it's good. What a great finish. Way to put that in the back of the net. You know, again, they're attacking the right side of that, uh, right side of that pitch and they're doing an excellent job and really putting pressure on them. UI Delgado with the goal at the 32-32 mark as we step aside. You're watching High School Soccer on WOSN. one nothing. your score. The Wasion Redskins on top after a goal from Eli Delgado. 32 minutes and change to play. Evan Skilleter and Mitch Monfort with you. And Nice. We talked about them getting the ball to the outside and a nice job getting it to that back post as Delgado able to finish. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they've really been working the ball on the right side and they're back at it again. Um, and they're using that to their advantage. They uh, obviously favor the right side and, um, you know, and they were able to put the ball on the back post and just make that defense work and, and find those angles that, uh, you know, they might not have found had they come straight up the middle. Nice step there by the Trojan midfielder. That was... Brant Metz knocking it away. Redskins still with possession. Nice, nice move skill. Right there. Maybe a chance. Ball, ball played into the box, but a nice job by the goalkeeper, Carson Motter, coming off his line. A nice quick pass out to the width here and see what they can do, see if they can put something together here going offensively. Up top with John Smock. Smock brought down, and it is a foul. A dangerous one at that as the tackle came in from behind by Manuel Gante. Played quickly by the Trojans, working it up with Smock. Smock has it knocked away, trying to fight for possession, gets it back on that left foot. That plays it into the box. Maybe a chance developing as the cross goes off the defender and out for a Botkins corner. Smock did an excellent job of holding that ball and fighting for that position. Gave him a nice through ball and just 
Good enough to get a corner and see if they can finish on this. Evan Greaves sets it on the corner. Greaves waiting patiently. Second corner for Botkin. Still waiting. I'm not sure what's going on, but here we go anyway. The lefty top of the box cleared up and out for another corner. This time we'll be on the near side. As a matter of fact, they'll just keep it on that far side with Greaves. Nearly 10 minutes played here on the Charles River scoreboard. one nothing. Wasion on top early. This one played into the middle. Knocked away by the Redskins, and we'll have a handball as Botkins got an arm on it. Free kick for Wasion. Season 18 of Sports Report started Friday night. You can join Patrick Kamler for a full hour of the most comprehensive football coverage around. All season long, Fridays at 10 p.m. on WTLW. This ball played in behind the defense. Nice recovery there by Ryland Paul. Now, ball taken back by Wasian. Did a really nice job laying that ball off. And uh, seeing that runner, they made eye contact and knew right away where they wanted to play that ball going forward. They're staying on the outside. This one played over the goal, but I believe it went out for a throw on the far side. Referee had his yeah. hand up anyway. I think, yeah, I think they got him on offsides. You might have just got gotcha. there a little too early. And, you know, uh, again, they're attacking that right side. They know what works for them, and they keep going back to it. Botkins restarts, moving the ball to the middle of the field with Brant Metz. Now they'll switch. This is Russell Lenhart. Lenhart with some space to move forward. Gets around a defender. Actually, some good physicality there by Eli Delgado. Yeah, Eli did an excellent job putting a little pressure on his back and, uh, you know, uh, causing that turnover and making a real quick counter. Back to work go the Trojans. Smock. Smock. Trying to play it behind the defense. They get a foot on it. Jack Steinke had it back momentarily, but the Redskins gained possession. More jostling in the midfield. Botkins just finds a relief valve, dropping it back. Botkins is doing a real nice job moving the ball side to side. They just got to connect a little bit more uh, in the middle and uh, watch these counters coming back at them, especially on the right side of that pitch. You know, they're going to have to adjust a little bit here. Oh, yeah, well done. Maybe some room for Smock to go to work. Sends it up the left side. He was looking for Keegan Thorpe. Thorpe does get on the end of it, but has a defender right in his grill. Thorpe did an excellent job of using his uh, athleticism to really apply that pressure on the ball. Uh, really made it difficult for that defender to get rid of it. Now back to midfield. Played outside. Good run out to that right side yet again. See if they can capitalize here. Top of the box. Good job by the Bakken's defense. Really making it tough to get through the middle. Now a deep shot, that'll be well wide left. Yes, they did an excellent job staying fundamentally sound on that defense. I mean, they really just made it difficult for him to beat somebody going forward. It was just really tough for him to find any space. Uh, that defender was all over him and just, you know, wouldn't give him an edge either way. So a goal kick for Botkins. They'll play it short. They've really focused hard on that possession and playing the ball short. You haven't seen too many passes be errant and go too far down the pitch. Playing it safe. Yeah, yeah, I've noticed that quite a bit tonight. Everything's been really quick or short. I mean, they've done an excellent job of relieving that pressure. Oh, that's an unfortunate foul right there. Oh, what a quick ball here. We're back in and uh, see if we can link this up with somebody. That's Benicio Torres getting it up to Reeker. Reeker's going to try the left-footed shot. That takes a deflection. And the Indians will see it out for a goal kick. Or, pardon me, a corner from the near side. Corner number two. Three, excuse me. There. 
Again, we're, we're seeing both teams really take their time to get to these corners, to take these goal kicks. Okay. It's the early season. We're still trying to get our legs underneath us, as, as the players are. I mean, and they're just trying to, you know, get a feel for where they're at right now with their bodies. This one curled into the box. Good job getting ahead on it by the Trojan defender. Yes, sir. That was a excellent corner, play, uh, corner kick play. I mean, we saw, quote, unquote, picks everywhere. And, I mean, there were uh, players open and a way to get that out of the air. And I'll see if we can, what they can do with it. Now this one played in behind the defense. Who's got the wheels to get there? It's an Indian defender first, and he just kicks it out to let his defense recover. And I saw some pretty quick players over there on that far side. Yes, sir. I mean, we, there was a couple of them uh, applying that pressure again. I mean, we're using that athleticism and that width and uh, see what they can do, if they can play it through, if they can find feet. Now the Trojans, a shot from the edge of the box, and wide. I don't believe it took a deflection. And it will be out for a goal kick because we get a substitute on the far side. And again, as players, they can, you know, condition themselves and, you know, save a little bit of energy on substitution, corner kicks, goal kicks, take their time, you know, know where they're at and conditioning at least. Back to work go the Indians, although the pass errant and taken away by Russell Lenhart. Trojan switch fields. Nice, pa nice pass to the winger right there. Way to find that space and see, oh, unlucky did not be able to connect in the middle. And again, they'll try to pop it up and behind the defense. That's Vajan trying to run on the end of it. He has two defenders around him and not able to get possession as it's knocked away by Lenhart. That was an excellent double team. They they knew he was applying pressure, and they just made sure that it was nearly impossible for him to get through. It's Gavin Gehrig having it taken away from him. What a good, clean, physical play as sure, well. Sure, I really one. I really like the way Smock works up top. I mean, he's he's in every possession. He's working hard, uh, regardless if it's played to him or not. You always see him, you know, working uh, back and helping out his midfield and defense. But he does an excellent job of. Applying pressure. Now Vajan with it on his right foot. Pulls it back to his left. Now trying to find some space for that shot. Ends up just dropping it back. And the Indians still working hard. Oh, and look at this. Nice. Between two defenders. Way ball eventually a, knocked away. Way to find a split there. I mean, there was no room for that play at all. And he was able to squeeze through there. I mean, that was just sheer talent and uh, work ethic. You just love to see the kid battle for that ball and now uh, be able to make a move through two defenders like that and then find that next pass. 22-40 to play. First half of action here from Elida. Wasion on top of Botkins 1-0 on the Charles River scoreboard. Now Smock. Smock playing it to the right side. John Ratterman giving it back to Smock. Smock still working as he slides for the ball. Now finally kicked out by Wasion. But like you said, John Smock working really hard, being physical, being strong, and really starting to create some opportunities perhaps. For sure. He did a really nice job of slipping that ball behind that defender and let his, his right wing make that run. And again, after he lost the ball, he, he, he didn't stop. Smock is just really applying pressure all over the pitch and just do an excellent job of it. Indians trying to counter quickly. Botkins sniffs that one out and it's cleared away by the goalkeeper. Botkins is doing a real nice job finding the width on both sides of the pitch. You know, they just really got to find that next link in the, in the final third, but they're definitely moving the ball well. Some nice clean passing and really connecting amongst each other and you know, Wasion right now feels like they're almost countering and finding their big playmakers up top and uh, using their skill set, not necessarily the passing as much. Well, that was a nice touch right there. Far side for the Indians, working it up the right. All the way into the box, but finally knocked away by Ryland Paul. Paul's been very active back there as he's had to be as that one 
Goes just over the bar. Nice build up by the Indians. Oh, again, they, they attacked that right side and played a beautiful ball in. Just an unlucky uh, finish right there. I mean, they did an excellent job with that ball right in at where the position to need to be to score. That was a beautiful service. Ultimately out for a goal kick. And booted upfield by Carson Motter. Trojans working it up their left side, but taken away. Oh, good defensive pressure right there. Excellent job. What it calls that turnover. Brant Metz, the Trojan, taking that one away as the ball sent back into play by the Indians. Here's Vajan. Oh, what nice a nice move. move. Yeah, way to attack that kid. Vajan through the entire defense, still with it as he slides down, and ultimately that goes out. No call from the referees. Now we have a goal kick signaled for. And my goodness, Vajan taking on almost the entire defense. Yes, sir. He immediately, he, he doesn't hesitate. As soon as he gets the opportunity, he wants that one-on-one. -on -one. That ended up being like a one-on-four, and he still didn't, it didn't matter. He's still attacking at all times. Just an uh, offensive mindset you like to see as a coach, just trying to find that uh, little bit of space and opportunity to finish the ball. Now an Indian throw on the far side. It's that right side that they like to work down. Looking for something now around the defense. Now maybe some space to cross. And closed off. And tough work, but that ball's still in the box. Still some danger. Now knocked away. The Trojans get it out. And the Tro Trojans did an excellent job of really uh, putting numbers behind the ball. I mean, there are seven or eight defenders in that. 18 just makes it very difficult to move that ball around. And, uh, you know, they're, they're handling that footwork well as a team and, and just doing a real good job of containing as much as possible. Now Vajan sends it up over the defense. And nice job by the goalkeeper coming off his line once again. And I'll tell you what, Mitch, when you are a goalkeeper, you decide to come off that line, you can't hesitate, can you? You've got to make a decision. Otherwise, you get caught in between and you've got issues. Sure, yeah. He, he was, did, did an excellent job of staying high in that box. I mean, he saw the ball coming, but his line to start off with allowed him to make that play a little easier than it could have been. Ratterman not able to keep it in. Indians will... Have a toss. As a substitute enters the game at 17.53. We'll step aside as well. We'll be right back with more on WOSN after this. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Charles River in Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio. And they're hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. One nothing on that Charles River scoreboard in favor of the Wasion Indians. Evan Skilleter and Mitch Monfort with you with game one of today's doubleheader. Botkins with the ball. Ratterman gets a little shove from behind and now a free kick. Maybe in a dangerous position, although they'll take this one quick and send it down the right side. Giving chase. Now the Indians, they've done a really nice job defensively thwarting any attack that the Trojans have had. They've had a couple corners, the Trojans, but anytime they try to carry that ball, the Indians are right there in their face. Oh, yeah, they're doing a real good job of applying pressure. I mean, they've done a, a nice defense effort as an entire team to stay connected and just, you know, limit that space as they get in that final third. Ratterman throws this in for Smock, but Smock has it taken away. Now quickly up the left side. Here's Vajan. Now Manny Gante sends it down the right, but too far. And gobbled up by the goalkeeper, Motter. Again, they really like to play that short ball nice and quick and uh, use that to their advantage. I mean... Uh, their defense does a pretty good job of finding that next pass and linking it up and 
just playing small ball right now, and they're doing a real good job. And as a coaching staff, you kind of hope that as the game goes on, they can wear the legs out of Wasion by doing that. Just keep moving that team side to side. Now, quick ball to the left and right, back to the right side for the Indians. Gante working his way through the midfield. Now sends it over to Vajin. Vajin back to his left foot. Now on the right, back and forth he goes. Ball played on the ground, the shot, and I think it was knocked away by a defender there. That was Corey Koenig, who put the offensive player off just enough to keep that ball slowing on the ground. Yeah, just, you know, sometimes all you need is a little bit of pressure. And, I mean, they did it. They're, again, they're doing an excellent job playing a real good team defense on a young man that has some talent. Vajin just finds some space, and he's, he's ready to rip, uh, or he's ready to attack downhill. He just does an excellent job of making that defense work really hard and make them uncomfortable. Another substitute entering the game for the Indians. Now the ball played in up the right side, but taken away. Here's Koenig, and once again, Koenig closed off quickly. Smock not able to get on it. Yeah, it appears they've uh, moved Smock back a little bit more to the midfield position. I feel like they uh, they realize he uh, could probably do a little bit more work in that midfield. I mean, they're, they were getting the ball, but there wasn't much option when he got up there. So maybe put him more in that center midfield and give him – Get, get some more touches and see if you can create some more opportunities for the, the forwards as they go forward. Absolutely. Still struggling to string together possession as this one booted forward for Ratterman, but cut out by the Indians' defense. Now at the left side they go, but cut out nicely. That's Smock using his body. Yes, again, and the, we, we can see Bakken's again. They're going to play it short and try to work this ball around, make those forwards run all over the place, chase the ball, hopefully run some legs a little tired. And, and again, Smock doing what he does best and just making the, that uh, offense a little bit uncomfortable when he's on defense, just a motor right now. Ball sent in by Reese Pauley. That one knocked away from Benicio Torres. Torres watches it go out, and it's a throw for the Indians. Trojans with a couple substitutions here as we go under 13 minutes to play in the first half. Looks like the Indians will send a player out as well. Manuel Gante will take a seat. Well, the ref, the ref caught him. They they put him on the line kind of late, and uh, ah, okay. yeah, it was too late of a substitution. And unfortunately, you know, uh, those things happen. Sometimes you do it as a coach. Maybe your team might be a little tired. You just send that sub up just a little bit later than normal, try to catch them, take a little bit longer for those uh, substitutions to come in, especially as you're early in the season. You know, you got a lot of young – those kids, the legs just – it's tough to get those legs in practice. You sure. Know? You just really got to work on uh, game shape and uh, – Again, just keep moving those bodies. Yeah, you know, we saw that a lot on football Friday night this week sure. where you get into the third and the fourth quarter and you can have the best athlete in the world, but, you know, first game out there, trying to get used to that heat and that uh, just, just that stamina not quite there yet. You get a lot of cramping. Yeah, oh, yes, definitely. I mean, you tell your players to hydrate all the time, but, I mean, there's nothing like a game day. I mean, I'm sure these boys have been thinking about this game since they woke up this morning and, um, you know, and, and again, you you have to have those game, that game uh, legs and that strength and that endurance to push through an 80-minute game, which can be a very difficult, especially in and mid, uh, or I mean, I'm sorry, late August. I mean, it's a beautiful night tonight, but it's still hot for these kids as they run around and they're working hard. This ball played forward, and Botkins trying to make something happen as the Indians get back, and a little miscommunication as the ball goes out for a corner. Yeah, Botkins kind of switched it up a little bit there. I think this is the real first time we saw them go with a pretty decent long ball, and, and then it caused a little chaos for that Wasion defense on how to handle that. Corner number four for the Trojans. A 
will send this one near post and it goes out. Keeper did not get a touch before it hit the side netting. So a goal kick coming up for the Indians. Hey, make sure you mark Labor Day on your calendar. The second annual LifeWise 5K presented by the Tom All family of dealerships. The race begins at the Sunnydale House where LifeWise Elida begins its second year. We have more to celebrate as the launch of Academies in Allen East and Spencerville take place in September. To sign up, Google Elida LifeWise 5K and follow the link to runsignup.com. A little error there by the Trojan defense as Vajan gets on the end of it. Vajan, as we've seen, is very dangerous. He sends that one back post. Good save from the keeper. What an opportunity they had. I mean, he saw his space and immediately attacked. He saw the mistake and, and he was trying to capitalize. It was a great shot and a better save by the keeper. Now the Indians sending it back up the field. Vajan spinning around a defender. Vajan might have a chance here as he sends it toward the goal, but with the off foot, just sending it wide left. He's doing an absolute excellent job of putting that pressure on that defense. That ball was played high. Uh, you know, they misjudged it, and the communication skills kind of fell apart as he applied that pressure. Vajan, a junior on this Indians team. And again, Botkins will play this one short up the left side, a little space to move it forward. Now even further out left and up the pitch go the Trojans. That pass under the foot of its target out for a throw. Yeah, they're doing a real nice job working that ball from the back to the midfield. Just going forward, they, they've got to connect somewhere in that, that their forwards. They've got to link up or the attacking mid. You know, that's the, the piece they're missing right now. There it is. This one sent up the left, but the keeper no problem getting off his line and grabbing that one. That was Brody Balzer, the freshman goalkeeper. Trojans keep this one in, playing it to the middle of the field. Yeah, he does an excellent job right now as a freshman, as we've seen. Just really, that's a tough position for any kid, let alone a freshman. And, you know, he's handling it well back there. He's, he's judged the ball well so far from what we've seen. And, you know, that's all you can ask. Just keep... Keep working and keep finding that those angles and make it harder to score on you. Here's Colin Minetti sending it forward off a defender. Trojans take it away. It's up with Trent Paul. Nice ball to the outside. Here's Ratterman. John Ratterman back to Paul in the middle of the field now. Paul's doing an excellent job of finding that window in the middle. I mean, he's sitting right where he needs to be and really connecting those balls. And this one popped up into the air. Vajan's going to get on the end of it. Vajan with a chance with the right foot and gets under it just a bit too much as it's up and over the, bo or the bar. Excuse me. Yes, again, it's one on two, and it doesn't matter. I mean, Vajan gets an opportunity to apply his pressure. He's going to continue. I love his aggressiveness as a player. You just love to see him continue to, to make that defense uncomfortable as many ways as you can. Trojans with seven minutes, 20 seconds to get something on the board in the first half. As they send this one to the right side, it's cut out. Now a chance for the Indians to counter. Up oh, the right side. Nice pass from the outside of the foot. That was a nice pass with his right outside of his foot to get that ball bending outward. Ball sent in quickly, edge of the box. Dropped back. Chance to cross, sent into Vajan, header and right at the goalkeeper. But once again, we see those dangerous balls coming from the right side for the Indians and a shot on goal. Yes, I mean, they've, they've, they've lived by that at this point. I mean, I don't think there's been too many opportunities uh, that have not come from that right side. And it looked like that one hit the hand of the Trojan offensive player. It did indeed. What a nice ball in down the right side. I don't believe that's number nine on the far side, Reese Asselage. Trojan's not able to keep it in. It'll be thrown in quickly. Bajan trying to get around a defender, but it's taken away. Ryland Paul sending it back to the keeper, then getting it right back. 
Paul around a defender. Nice job there. It's a dangerous one, too, when you're messing around with the ball that deep into your defensive third. Yes, sir. I mean, they did they they didn't have many options and uh, you know they played it back to the keeper and he got out of that with a nice little move a little deke of the shoulder and next thing you know he found some space and really tried to open it up and maybe find that counter a few more substitutions here as we near the five and a half mark Now Indians will get it right back. We've talked about the possession a little bit, but it just seems like the Trojans, especially in the midfield, really are struggling to string together possession and move the ball up the field with, with short passes. We've seen a couple in behind the defense that have worked out okay. Yeah, you know, they, they've done an excellent job, like we said, working from the back, but once they get into their opponent's defending half, they're really kind of struggling, linking it up and looking for Maybe another avenue to find that pass, uh, to continue that, that short game up going forward. And now maybe a chance developing from the top of the box. Shot to the left side, not much behind it as the keeper slides over and picks it up with no problem. Yeah, again, Schmuck just, you know, he found his avenue again, and he's just really, he's playing where he needs to play. And I think maybe moving them back to midfield will allow him to be more, you know, productive for the team. This one airborne, brought down by the Indians. Moving up once again, this time trying to play it out wide left. And even when they go left, they don't stay super far out, right? Sure. They're really favoring the middle of the field on the left side. Here's Vajan. Vajan still working, now gets the cross there. And the one-timer, no good as it's over the bar. You know they do an absolute excellent job. They get that defender out in that width, and they just attack. I mean, uh, anytime they get a chance for a one-on-one -on -one matchup, they really trust their skill set to, to beat that kid. And uh, so far, it's uh, been proven pretty successful. This one played up on the ground. Trent Paul. Paul to Smock. Smock has it taken away. Here comes Vajan. Maybe some space to take a long shot. No, it's a pass. Very unselfish play, and... I don't know if it was a cross or a shot, but either way, no harm done. Yeah, I mean, he made an axe. That was a great overlapping run, and that run just gave him that space over uh, the left shoulder evasion, and that just gave him opportunity. I'm sure he'd want that shot back if he can get it or cross, whatever it was, but, you know, uh, it just didn't work out the way he wanted it to. Now the Trojans moving it forward. Clean play there. Smock. Smock goes down, loses possession, and again, the Indians will try to counter quickly. That one in behind the defense, but grabbed by Carson Motter. You kind of see some errant passes right now. I feel like we have some tired kids out here. They're just, you know, not linking as cleanly as they were at the beginning of that first half. You know, maybe even some frustration, but, you know, again, early part of the season, uh, it's, sometimes it's tough. That to Those legs get a little bit heavy and, you know, just one bad touch, and next thing you know, you're on defense. And we see that right here as, again, the Indians moving into that final third. This is Torres. Torres, nice touch, has some space. And instead just lets the defender knock it out for a corner. That was Russell Lenart. So you hear the two-minute warning. Indians will take their time. Watch Vajan. He's awfully tall. An aerial threat, no doubt. Hanging out at the top of the box. Now makes a run. That one's back post over everyone's head. Out for a goal kick. Yeah, they do an excellent job trying to strike that ball there. I think we've seen three or four strikes so far. Just a, a nice clean volley. And unfortunately, he didn't connect with that or else... That could have been a very dangerous opportunity on that back post. Short down the left. The Trojans go. Nice pass ahead, not a down, but taken away and knocked out for a throw. 
Trent Paul in the midfield knocking that out for the Indians throw. Smock gets it up. Just unlucky. If that ball's played a little bit more forward, he's got a little bit of space to get a nice little run on that. To give his team an offensive opportunity that they're struggling right now as they progress into that, that final third for them. Wasion with the throw, Clay Soltis. Knocked down by the Trojans and just sent deep into the box and it'll be picked up by Balser. Ten Ten, seconds to go, first nine, half. Eight, seven, six, five. Indians trying to get four, a chance. They'll have three, to take a shot there as two, it's sent up one, and over the bar. Zero. Not a bad effort. But the score remains one to zero on the Charles the River scoreboard. Score. Eli Delgado with the lone one. score of one the first zero. half as we step aside. Second half coming up after this on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. We welcome you back to Elida, where it's 1-0 in favor of the Wasion Indians over the Botkins Trojans after a goal eight minutes in by Eli Delgado. Second half underway. Evan Skilleter and Mitch Montfort with you. And Mitch, I'll tell you what, it was a, a, a good first half of action. Botkins probably hoping to generate a few more chances, but what were your overall impressions? Yeah, I thought Botkins did an excellent job of really working the ball from their defense up to midfield, but they've got to find a way to link it forward. And it looks like they're, you know, maybe trying to put a little bit more pressure here to get that ball into the attacking uh, third for them. And I, I think Wasion has done an excellent job. They've, they're finding their playmakers. I mean, uh, when you have a kid that can make a move one-on-one, -on -one, one on three, he doesn't care. You know, they're just really looking for Vasion and trying to find him, you know, with a little bit of space and a little bit of opportunity. I think he can capitalize uh, for Wasion here. Trojans with the ball in the black uniforms with the gold trim, moving it through the middle. This one in behind the defense. Maybe a chance developing. Ball still loose. The goalkeeper finally getting a hand on it. Nice job by Brody Balzer. That was an excellent through ball they played through. And uh, if, if you, you watch that play, it developed earlier. Uh, you know, he just, the offensive forward started moving four yards before the defense knew that ball was coming. And, I mean, they just threaded that through. Uh, pretty well, and that was a great opportunity for their first goal of the game. Balls are with the, the heads up play as well. He gets a paw on it to start. Ball still loose and did a nice job stretching out, just getting a hand on top. And as a goalkeeper, as soon as you get that hand on top, the, the, the offense can't come in and knock it out from you. So that he did a great job doing exactly what you need to do and just touching the ball so play can stop. Sure, you know, those referees really try to do a good job protecting those kids and uh, that's an excellent, you know, job by them to make sure that kid's taken care of. And as a goalie, you got to know that and use that to your advantage. Any chance you can get a hand on it, uh, you know, <coughs> make that uh, offensive player understand that's your ball. Whether you have two or one, just make it harder for them to capitalize in that, in that opportunity. Indians back to work. If you're just joining us, the Wasion jerseys, uh, I shouldn't even say a little hard to, to see the number. It is almost impossible to see the number. So I'm doing my best here to get you the names of the players that are out there in, in the midst of the action. We'll have a free kick for Wasion as Benicio Torres takes a seat. That's just an unlucky uh, location for that foul to happen. I mean, kid was going backwards. Not a really good opportunity for him. Uh, you know, to play that ball forward and that foul is going to give him a great opportunity to play a dangerous ball in and again finish in the air. It looks like Torres will take the referee. Backs up Brian Metz. Indians offense lined up at the top of the box. Torres to the back post, floats it up. Ball still loose, shot, goal. And that's going to be Vajin with the goal. Yes, again, I mean, he's, he's been a dangerous threat the entire game. And, uh, you know, it was kind of a sloppy just well, ball kind of floating around. And he was able to get a little touch on it and put it in the back of the net. And 
Again, striking from the right side to the left. Uh, he, he did an excellent job to finish that in the back of the net. The assist to Torres at the 36-52 mark as we step aside. You're watching High School Soccer on WOSN. Our scoreboard is presented by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. 2-0 on that Charles River scoreboard after Vajan gets the goal, assisted by Torres, and the Indians on top 2-0. I say it a lot on broadcast, Mitch. You often see a lot of goals scored at the high school level on just broken plays. When you get the ball into the box and you have a cluster of players getting a foot on it, ball bouncing around, and finally someone finding a toe. That's kind of what we saw right there. You don't want to take anything away from the nice ball played in by Torres. Sure. Uh, but I always say, if you get the ball into the box, you're dangerous. Yes, indeed. I mean, you just kind of want that ball floating around in there. You know, and you need your playmakers to make plays, and that ball sat around for a little bit, and Vajan cleaned it up real quick, and, and again, it led by a foul that just, you know, made it, it made him a good opportunity to, to get an offensive strike. There's a shot from very deep, maybe a frustration shot there, as we haven't seen too much in terms of chances for the Trojans. Reese Asseledge sending that toward goal. Goal kick sent to the middle of the field. That's Manuel Gante. Now taken away. Brent Metz. Smock sends it into the box. No one there. Goalkeeper will have no problems coming out for that one. Stay tuned for our second game coming up after this. It's the host... Elida taking on the Bluffton Pirates. Should be a really good matchup there. Two great programs going at it. Yes, indeed. And not only that, but you're, it starts to cool off a little bit easier later in the night. It's going to be a little easier for these kids to, you know, get those game legs underneath them because it's not as hot. Even though it's a beautiful day today, as that sun goes down, uh, it should be uh, even a nicer night for them to play some soccer. Absolutely. Good work on the far side. Reese Osilage gets around the defense up the right side, but it's knocked away out for a Trojan throw. Lenart picks it up. He'll send this one into the edge of the box. Knocked down by Smock. Smock gets around the defense. Chance to cross. He does. Ball loose in the box. Drop back. Shot blocked. Ball still free as that one will go out for a Trojan throw. Smock did an excellent job of finding that young man in space. And, you know, the difference right now is Bakken's had that opportunity and just didn't capitalize. I mean, that ball hung around for a little bit, but just not able to find the space or the opportunity to put it in the back of the net. Here's Eli Delgado moving it on his own. Delgado, the first goal scorer, seven and a half minutes into this one. He hits the deck. And we're going to have a card, perhaps. The referee stops the clock. And we will, as that is our first caution issued in this game. And that's one of those that might not have been malicious, but the card comes out because you stop a, an advance from the offensive team. Uh, really, it could have been a strategic move there. Yes, indeed. I mean, again, as uh, you want your team to be able to get back and then help out, you know, and, and the refs know that, and that's part of the game is a, a good quality foul, not a dangerous play, not malicious like you said. Uh, but, you know, uh, sometimes you have to send a message of, as a ref. We're not going to let this get chippy either. And uh, as now we're 2-0, and you know, and as Wasion's attacking, they've they've been fouled the last two times they've come forward. So, as a ref, you might make that call. So Torres, who assisted on the last goal, will take this free kick as well. Referees getting the Trojans back 10 yards. Yeah, referee not extremely happy about whatever's going on down there. Perhaps some extra words said. As you said, you know maybe that yellow came out so the referees do make sure that they keep a, a, a handle on this game. And if things are continuing to get out of hand, you might see that card come in. Another card come in, excuse me. 
Torres, another floater, knocked down, far side. Here comes a shot, Vajin on the ground and gobbled up. Yes, we have an excellent uh, refing crew here tonight, and these gentlemen are, you know, allowing the kids to play, but also keeping the game under control. And, you know, that it's an early yellow card in the second half, but you don't want this to get out of control. And even that conversation was, it's always nice to see that instead of immediately reach for that sure. second yell. You know, keep the kids playing. You know, it's an emotional game, but, you know, don't let it get out of hand. This one played up the right side. Perhaps some space here. This is Gante. Gante crosses it. Vajin goes up, goes down. No call. That one cleared out of the box, but still some trouble. Yeah, that was, that was a dangerous play. I mean, he's in the air, and uh, unfortunately he didn't get ahead on it. But again, Wasyan's really attacking yet again from the right side and using their one-on-one -on -one ability to find that space out there. Now a corner coming up as we see this one get a little more physical. Yeah, yes. The, the, again, it appears Bakken's getting a little physical in their defense at third, and, uh, you know, they, they don't enjoy being on the defense at half, which is great, but you got to be a little cautious on how we're uh, approaching these uh, plays, you know. Corner. This one's short. Knocked out of the box. Indians trying to send it back toward the left side. Knotted up in the air and brought down by John Ratterman. See, Bakken's going to hit this counter right here. They might be able to catch Wasion being a little deep, and uh, let's see if they can play it through here. Smock sends it down the left side. Keegan Thorpe trying to run on the end. It's knocked away by the Indians and out for a Bakken's throw. Yeah, Bakken's did an excellent job transitioning right there. I mean, they use their speed athleticism to find that space and, you know, get an opportunity here. Ratterman tries the give and go. It's knocked away by the Indians. Torres gets around a defender, finds some space. Torres, plenty of padding in that midfield as he sends it up left. That's Delgado. Delgado with the big touch. He goes down. That's a foul. And you wonder, similar to the last one we saw on the near side, if that was one that a little bit strategic, a defender seeing the offensive player going around him and knocking him over. Yeah, I mean, that was, that was a pretty uh... – Pretty dangerous tackle, if I must say so myself. We, we got to be careful here. And again, got to make sure this game's staying under control. And uh, the last three times Wasion's attacked, uh, Bakken's has put him on the ground. I mean, I don't think they've gotten a clean look at before they've been fouled. So, you know, Wasion really needs to make him punish by finishing this one in the net here. Torres sends this middle of the box. Keeper comes out. Ball loose goes to the back of the net once again. It's Vajin with his second. The 30-53 mark. Yes, again, that, that foul just allowed them to, you know, play a ball in without any pressure at all, and they're able to apply that pressure, and that just makes it a tough play for that goalkeeper and, and that defense to react that way. And, again, Vajin's attack, and he, he sees an opportunity. He, he, might, he smells the opportunity to, you know, put that ball in the back of that, and he's there to finish. I mean, if Bakken's keeps fouling, this this could reoccur again and again. Uh, so hopefully uh, they they come with a different strategy, maybe you know build it up from the back or just slow them down until they can recover in, in position. Just a nose for goal, the junior forward. Smock trying to work his way through midfield off the restart. Smock down the right side, finds a man behind the defense, chance to cross. That one's knocked down by the Indians, played back into the box. This one cleared again, and that's a good tackle right there. Ball with Smock. Smock again down the right. Maybe a chance for a shot sent toward goal, and a good job by Balser knocking that one down. He played a nice angle right there, making sure there's no space to his left, and that's a tough angle anyway as we have an injured player. Sure, no, no doubt. This freshman's really coming out here and really uh, – Set the tone. I mean, uh, he, he's played better than I would expect a freshman to play. And I mean, he's reading the ball well. I, I believe he's talking well to his defense because I see them looking over their shoulders. And he's made some plays to, you know, keep a clean sheet so far. And you just love to see a young man like that continue to play. Absolutely. And it looks like the training staff will come onto the field. So with that, we'll step away with 30-20 to play. In the second half, it's 3-0. to zero. Indians on top. Welcome back to Elida as the injured player able to run off the field under his own power. Looks like he'll be 
okay. It's always good to see. 3-0 on our Charles River scoreboard. Two goals from Braden Invasion and an early goal from Eli Delgado. Your scores of this one, Evan Skilleter, Mitch Monfort with you. Wasion well in control of this game as Botkins trying to string something together, sending it back again into their final third. Maybe a chance as they have numbers forward. This one played in, and the shot knocked away by the Indians' defense. That was Ryland Paul in the box getting the chance for the Trojans. Now maybe something developing as it's sent back into the box. That one's knocked down and out for a corner. Bakken's is playing with a sense of urgency. They know they're down by a few goals here, and we can start to see the numbers pushing forward and, you know, get that opportunity. I mean, that's what they've been missing this game so far. So hopefully, you know, they can come put one in, and let's see if we can get this, uh, you know, get the net moving a little bit for Bakken's. Evan Greaves on the far side. Playing the corner short, getting it right back. Chance to cross, and he's tackled hard. Ball into the box, maybe a chance, and a good job by the referee who lets play continue, playing the advantage, and nothing doing. So they'll pull it back for the foul and the free kick for the Trojans on the far side. Of course, I mean, he did an excellent job letting that ball play on. I know fans and coaches, everybody gets frustrated. He's doing an excellent job, make sure there wasn't a scoring opportunity. I mean, that, that foul is right on the edge of the 18, and uh, that, this will give Bakken's maybe the chance they need to put this in the back of the net. Referee gets the defense placed where he needs to. Ten yards away from the spot. Now this one crossed back post, knocked in the air, and looks like we have a foul against the Trojans, and we're going to get a card here. Referee reaching into his pocket. A yellow comes out. So the foul was actually against the Indians, so we've got... A goal kick, or excuse me, a penalty kick. A lot going on on the field as a yellow card was issued. The Indians will send in a substitute. It's Torres who was injured. Good to see him back out there. And now Smock's going to take a penalty. Yes, again, I, I feel like the refs are trying to get control of this game. And the young, the young men are frustrated and tired. And let's see if he can put this in the back of the net. Smock seems to be a playmaker. And, you know, he's got a great opportunity to help his team out here. So the junior smock against the freshman goalkeeper, Brody Balzer. Smock standing straight behind the ball. Looks like he'll approach from straight on. The shot, and Balzer guessed right, but the shot in the back of the net as Smock with the goal. You know, that, that was a great shot. That young man as a uh, freshman, again, he's, he reads the game well. I don't know if he saw the hips. The Bucking eyes, but I mean, 10, he was Josh right Smock. there. Just, you know, a half second early. He, he, a little lower, he might stop that ball, but it, it gives a little bit of life to Bakken's here. And you wonder, you know, there's momentum in every game you play. It doesn't matter what it is. But especially in soccer, you get, you get that first taste of a goal. A lot of times you start to pick it up a little bit and the momentum gets on your side. Yes, indeed. I mean, like, it's like we just talked about, they're moving forward and they – they know the urgency, and you get that opportunity. A little bit of life, a little bit more juice left in those legs, and, and hopefully they can continue to apply pressure and you know, get, continue to get back in this game. Still chippy out there as you see Smock run through the back of Torres. Or excuse me, that's Manuel Gante. And again, they're, they're playing physical soccer out here, and it's contact sport. But again, the refs got to make sure everybody you know, plays within the rules. This one's Torres. Torres cutting back inside. Edge of the box. Nice touch to get to his right side. Here's the cross over the head of Vajin who runs it down. Vajin, nice move, but closed off by the second defender. And it does take two, three, and we've seen him get through four or five defenders to control Vajin. Yeah, Vajin uh, has no fear out there. You just love the way he plays and set, set up a great opportunity right there. I mean, I'd, again, just making that move one-on-one -on -one to play that ball back across. And it looked like a little miscommunication from the defense as one defender let it go past him and ended up being an Indian on the receiving end. But a nice save by the goalkeeper, Motter. Yes, indeed. I mean, he, he's, we got to keep that momentum if you're Bakken's, and you just 
you, you can get momentum from that defensive stop right there. You just love to see the goal in the right position. 90% of the saves are done before the ball's even shot, and he was just in the right spot. Now here's Vajan out wide, takes a heavy touch, and his cross. I haven't seen a call from the referee yet. That is a corner, so his cross got knocked away by the defense. Corner will be taken from the far side with 26 and a half to play in the second half. Seen a couple chances from corners for the Indians. According to the scoreboard corner, number seven. This one right to the middle. Vajan misses with his head, but the follow up goes off a of Trojan and out for another corner. Yeah, if we if they keep getting these opportunities on the corner, they're gonna they're gonna finish one again. I mean they're just they're in the right space at the right time. I mean they're aggressive on these uh, free kicks, and this is causing. Bakken's a lot of trouble as a team to be able to get this ball out, to get back on the offensive game. Torres will move from left to right to take this one. Of course, in no hurry as his team up two. So we near the mid middle point of the second half. This one floated back post. And now Bakken's will be able to get rid of it. Here's Reese Asselage. And Wesleyan did an excellent job of keeping that ball trapped in in, the, in their offensive half, and that just makes it a lot harder for the Bakken team to get into that counter. Um, and as a coach, you just love to see that because now you have another opportunity to apply more pressure to the Bakken's defense and wear them out like they try to do the first half to Wasion. Nice job by the defense closing that one off. I believe that's Noah Butcher on the far side knocking it out. Nice touch pass. Chance to cross from the far side. That's Vajan who has it knocked away for an Indian throw. Yeah, you know, they, they keep playing Vajan. And uh, right now, Bakkins doesn't seem to have a counter for this. And this kid just feels he's feeling it right now. And he, he feels confident in his ability to beat the defenders one on one. And, and Wasion just knows that that's what they do. Just keep giving the ball. And here he comes again. And Vajan in an offside position that time. Nice back heel pass, but the defense did a nice job keeping that back line and drawing him offside. Yes, indeed, and, and Wasion's players are finding Vajan. I mean, they're finding different opportunities. It's not the same pass every time. And again, that makes it difficult for Bakkins to figure out how they're going to give him the ball, but it almost seems like every play they end up finding Vajan. Indians back to work with their defense. And no call there is... Play continues, Trojans sending it behind the defense, into the box, maybe a chance here as the pass falls short of its target. It's cleared away by the Indians. Yeah. And now a foul. Yeah, I feel I feel Wasson probably thought that was a foul and they stopped playing a little bit and Botkins was able to catch him, you know, and uh, that, that's causing problems. And we've got another card issued. Again, against the Indians. Yeah, there's a little dissent probably going on out there. I think some players are really frustrated with how the game is being called. And That's a red card. That's the second yellow issued, and the red comes out. Yeah, that's going to be tough. I'm sure as a coach, he's going to be extremely frustrated with this player. I mean, you hate to see him. Uh, you know, now you're down, to, you're down 10, and uh, that's, that's going to affect the game. Well, they have 11 in the game right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So the referees will have to get this one sorted out. 23 32 to go. It's three to one, but a man down for the Indians. Referee still working this one out. I'll tell you what, let's step aside, get a quick ad break here. We'll be right back with more on WOSN after this. 
Welcome back to Elida. Score still 3-1. to one. Wasion on top of Botkins. And now the red card you saw before the break has been rescinded. And so there are still 11 men on the field for, Bo or for both teams, really. Sorry, I'm as confused as everyone else as the referee decided to wave off the red card. Yeah, I mean, that's a total game changer now. I mean, that, that would give Bakken a little bit of momentum, and they're excited. They think they're up a man, and next thing you know, we, we lose that red card, and we're 11-11. So let's see what happens here for the next five, six minutes. Who can pick up after that emotional situation that is resolved? That one cleared away. Bakken's trying to get on the end of it, really needing to pick up the pace here as Noah Grevy Got possession back briefly. Trojans still with the ball. And again, I feel Bakken's is starting to push forward again. I mean, we see numbers going forward, and I, that's going to make them, on their defensive side, hopefully work less because they can uh, keep uh, Wasion trapped in in their uh, defensive half. Grevy throws it back down the right side into the box, knocked up in the air. Now, the Indians take it away and try to work it up the left side with Vajin. He stops, pulls it back. Nice pass outside of the foot. We've seen him do that a couple times tonight. Yes, he, he has all the, uh, all the ability to make the plays he, his team needs for him. This is Gavin Gehrig. He goes down. And looks like a goal kick. Yeah, and that defender did an excellent job of applying pressure. Uh, you know, it's a little questionable. I mean, he, the ref saw it to be clean, and that's all that matters. But, you know, he made that pressure known, and that offensive player could feel it coming, bearing down on him. And he impacted that shot. This one's sent to midfield. Trojans working it forward. Ball behind the defense once again, but this time the defender able to clear it away, and that's going to go left of the stick and out for a corner. Here's a great opportunity for Bakkins to find the back of the net, you know, and you just hope your playmakers are able to get in here and uh, get a body on this or a head or anything we take to put this in the back of the net. Evan Greaves running over to take this. Greaves trying to work quickly. And the referee again needing to blow his whistle and get some players to back off. Now the ball played, far post, over the head of a soaring Ryland Paul, and out for a goal kick. Yeah, I mean, he was right there, it just sounded lucky. I mean, that ball was just a little, a little too much height on it for him to finish it, but I'll tell you what, there were two of them back there that put that in the back of the net. And uh, it was great service, just, uh, just unlucky. Balzer sends it, midfield knocked down by the Trojans, but the Indians able to gain position, the ever dangerous Braden Vajan moving to the middle around a defender. Vajan closed off by another but cuts to his left. His shot's blocked. But again, you see him taking on two, three defenders at a time. And I, I think Botkins has adjusted quite a bit. I mean, I, I feel like they realize one-on-one -on -one, that's not a good matchup for him, and it's complete team defense. They just got to contain him and use numbers to kind of slow him down if you can because uh, this young man is very productive on the offensive end of the field. Bajan trying to get around Noah Grevy. Grevy knocks it out. It'll be an Indians throw. Under 20 minutes to play now, 3-1. to one. Your score on the Charles River scoreboard. Thought we might see a bicycle kick there. Oh, that would have been rather impressive from that distance and that angle. I mean, you just, again, just love the opportunity. Wasion uh, fears nothing. They just want to play and, and get those opportunities going forward. And we have a foul right in front of midfield. Trojans take it quick. Now down the right side, Grevy working his way up. Closed off, drops it back, and it's taken away. Connor Butcher will able to, is able to get onto it, excuse me, but the ball played up left by the Indians. Here's Bajan once again. Bajan has a few options this time. Plays it to the top of the box, 
This is Delgado with the right foot, and Delgado sails it right. Yeah, Delgado did an excellent job. He had a nice little flick on the outside of the foot just to give him some space. And, uh, you know, he almost bent that in. He, uh, he, he made it again another good opportunity for Rossian. The goal kick cut out and sent out by the Indians. Sent back in by John Ratterman. Well, eventually, there we go. Here's John Smock back to Ratterman. Ratterman down the left side, closed off, but gets it back. Ratterman, ball still at his feet, knocks it off a defender. Maybe a chance for a shot, it's blocked. Well done by that defender just to stay right in front of that to make it a nearly impossible shot. And, uh, you know, he blocked it, and that's great for his team because, uh, you know, Bakkins is moving the ball well. Ball played outside. Now the cross is behind the goal. Goes out harmlessly for a goal kick. Told you in the first half, but want to remind you, season 18 of Sports Report started Friday night. Join Patrick Kamler for all the full hour of the most comprehensive football coverage around. All season long, Fridays at 10 p.m. on WTLW. Ball played out by Botkins. That was Noah Butcher. I can't imagine that's what they meant to do, but still back to the goalkeeper. Seventeen minutes to play. And what a nice service by that goalkeeper. Can they end, get on the end of that? And unlucky there. I mean, that was a, a nice punt for that young man up top to get the opportunity and. You know, that's what Bakken's needs, just one more chance to find that back in that, however it is. That ball goes over everyone's head as it slows down. Oh, nice Taken by Ryland there. Paul. Ratterman, nice touch pass to the box. Chance developing, shot and oh. goal! What a strike, ladies and gentlemen. That was an absolute blast. I mean, that, that was well played, and Bakken's really needed that opportunity. And, uh, he just loved the way that young man just put that in the back of the net. Reese Aslidge with the goal, and there's still plenty of time left for Botkins to try to level this one up. Three to two with 6.28 left, and oh, momentum on their side. Yes, indeed. I mean, we talked about that earlier. It just takes one. You get that one opportunity, and, and that's all they need. And I, I think they feel it now. They, they've got the, the legs, they feel like. They've got the momentum going, and I'll we'll see if they can now, you know, tie this up or even take the lead possibly here. Busy night for the Charles River scoreboard. Five goals, three for Wasion, two for Botkins, and those two are the last two scored. As Botkins trying to level this up. Indians working into their final third, which we haven't seen a ton of in the second half. Here's Vajan. Nice cross, but knocked down nicely by the goalkeeper. Carson Motter. Yes, let's see if he does this long punt, see if he gives him another opportunity. And it's going to give him a little transition opportunity here and see if they can capitalize. Smock. Round one defender, but runs into another. That's a nice job by Seth Reeker, I believe, back there. The ball is out for a Trojan throw. Or was that a foul? Excuse me, it, a it foul was, and a free kick. Yeah, it was definitely a foul. I mean, the two gentlemen went right at each other kind of recklessly. And... Uh, as we said again, this is going to give Bakken's another opportunity. I mean, you know, they might be able to get on into this and uh, tie this ball game up. And I'm sure as a freshman goalkeeper, he can probably feel a little bit of pressure and hopefully uh, keep this out of his net. We keep this onto the ground at the edge of the box. Cross knocked away. And we've got an injured player down in the box as the Indians look to counter with Delgado. Delgado getting it out in front of him. Play will continue for now. Delgado sending it down the right side. This will be chased down by Noah Butcher. Player still down in the box. And we will stop play with 14.54. 3-2 Indians on top. We'll step aside. You're watching High School Soccer on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Welcome back to Elida as we have a quick throw in off the restart. 
Ball popped up into the air, out for an Indians throw. Wasion leading this one three to two, but the last two goals scored are from Botkins as the Trojans trying to get back into this one, but the Indians to work on offense. Here's a shot on the ground and it curls out harmlessly. A good look there. Evan Skilleter and Mitch Monfort here with you tonight on a beautiful night in Elida. Yes, indeed. I mean, we have a spectacular game here. I mean, both teams are really battling hard and working hard to get these balls in the back of the net. And, you know, we have plenty of time to see how this is going to shake out. I mean, both teams are getting opportunities now, and this is uh, it's going to get interesting as we get toward the latter part of this game. And this ball popped in behind the defense, but well out of reach of its target as the goalkeeper, Brody Balzer, who's done a nice job tonight, grabs that one. Ball to midfield, knocked down by the Trojans, but cut out. That's Gavin Gehrig in the midfield. Now on the far side, and you see the pressure being applied by the Trojans, and it forces a turnover, but they give it right back. Back and forth we go. Smock, his pass is knocked off an Indian. Chased down by Gante and sent forward for Vajin. Vajin with Two goals tonight. Eli Delgado with the first for the Indians. Here is Delgado, top of the box. Might think about a shot. It's on his right foot. Now he drops it back for Gehrig. And Wasson appears to be playing. Vajan saw a little something there. He felt like he's getting overwhelmed with maybe bodies he might be tired. Uh, but that's the first time I think I've seen him not attack a player one-on-one. -on -one. And, and see if Bakkins can now counter this here. Trying to use some quickness is Reese Asselage up the right side. Good job keeping possession. Now Smock with a chance, and he scuffs that one wide left. Great buildup. He thinks that there was a touch, a deflection rather, and the referee says goal kick. Yeah, that was an absolute great counter that was done by Bacchus. I mean, they got that ball up quickly and moved it into an excellent scoring position. Just an unlucky strike, and, uh, you know, they, they need to finish and capitalize on those opportunities there to get back in this game. 12 minutes and change to play in the second half. Indians moving it again through midfield. Here's Delgado. Nice job by Smock getting possession. Popping this one up in the air, and it looked like Osilage was working his way back to an onside position when that ball went over his head. I think he's, he sees a nice little soft spot in front of that defense, and I mean, he was working his way back, and uh, Smock likes that, that opportunity, a one-on-one -on -one over the top, and just a little miscommunication that happens frequently in the game as the game goes on. You know, and you kind of hope they connect that up and see if they can find another way to beat this defense here. That one popped up and out for a goal kick. So a chance to breathe for the Indians defense, who's been busy here in the second half. Smock knocks it down. Trojans back in possession. And I'll tell you what, if you look at the possession stats in the first half compared to the second, I think it'd be lopsided one way and then another. I couldn't agree more. I mean, we're, it's the tale of two halves at this point, you know, and and I think Bakken's maybe made some adjustments at halftime or, you know, they have a little bit more left in their legs. And Wasion right now is kind of back on their heels trying to, you know, maybe get the momentum back here. This ball's into the box, a chance from the top, and it's going to go wide. We've seen a couple chances from near the top of the box that if just not gotten the pace behind them that you'd want. Sure, yes. These young men, again, we were talking early season, heavy legs, and that, that's a tough shot to make coming down, running downhill. And, you know, they get a couple opportunities like that. Eventually they're going to capitalize, and that, that could be the, the, the way to tie this game up is keep working that back to the middle and uh, finding those, those touches that they need. Oscillage up into the box, and a nice job there by Balzer, who, had to be heads up, and he had to pay a lot of attention to that ball because he had an offensive player crashing in. Again, I can't say it enough. I mean, you're talking about a freshman here, ladies and gentlemen. This young man is, 
uh, playing behind his ears. That's a tough. You got a kid bearing down on you, and he's, uh, you know, not the biggest kid yet, and he's uh, he's back there holding his own. Just love to see that confidence and competence come out of that goalie, and uh, you know that's really helping his team here stay back, stay in this game. The agent a little sh shaken up on the far side as the Indians advance down the left. Maybe a chance to cross. Instead, it's knocked out for a corner as Vajan trying to stretch out. And now, again, that, that fatigue starts to play a role. Early season, warm night. Now, it's not the warmest night we've had, but I'll tell you what, it probably feels like 95 degrees out there sure. the, the way they're playing. Yes, I mean, you're talking about a kid who's out of the ball a ton. And we're having a kid go one on four and one on twos. I mean, he's got to be exhausted. And, you know, you just... You, you know that that's, that's going to happen, and you know hopefully he can get loose because they, they need him back on the pitch as quickly as possible. And what I thought was a corner ends up being a goal kick as the Trojans have possession, and they're trying to work it through midfield. Smock drops it back left. This is Noah Butcher. And Wasion did a real nice job right there staying connected and making go backwards. You know, Smock's been pretty dangerous finding avenues going forward, and... Uh, they made him turn the, the way they wanted to. And again, Bakken's here we go again. You know, getting opportunities. They're, they're finding, you know, a couple connections in the midfield going forward, and that's changed the game for them. This ball played into the box but headed away. Trojans with a chance. Left foot. That one's wide. And not much behind that either as Balzer comes out and grabs it. And we are at the eight-minute mark now. And, and Wasion will probably live with that shot at this point. I mean, I feel like they know uh, Bakkins is coming, and they'll, they'll let him take that 25, 30-yard shot, and you know, especially maybe not on a dominant foot, you know, and, and they'll live with that. But guys, you got to be careful here. You know, Bakkins is really applying pressure and giving a couple more opportunities. This could be a tied game. And a fight for possession as the Indians come up with it. Uh, that one goes out, so it goes right back to Botkins, who have applied a lot of pressure in this second half. It's resulted in two goals and a lot of possession. Ball staying in on the far side. Maybe a chance to cross. Instead, they keep it on the ground. Smock turning. Smock plays it outside. Nice pass. And now a shot, and that one is knocked up and over by Balzer. How about that as Greaves... Placed it about as perfectly as he could, but balls are right there. I'm going to tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, that was a great save. I mean, he keeps his game tied, and, uh, you know, you just absolutely love to see it. That, that young man saves the game for them right now to keep it tied. We've got a injured player getting stretched out once again. 6.50 to play as the clock stops. And he's back on his feet. Referees will think when a player has to stop play because of an injury, he has to leave the field. And that's what the referees are working out right now. If they, if they bring the trainer on, for sure he has to come off. And, I, and again, I think, like you said, they're trying to figure it out. Um, and uh, they're going to allow him to sub. I mean, I think the refs, again, understand. We know we're in the early season. You know what I love? I mean, this game got a little chippy. Uh, but it was a Bakken's player being stretched by a Wasson player. Go. I mean, you just you love to see those things. I mean, they love the sport. They love the game. And, you know, players taking care of each other. It's just a great sight, and especially after it got chippy. I mean, I feel like the refs got this game under control. They did a great job. And, you Absolutely. Know, and, and this has made this game enjoyable to watch from my perspective here. We'll play this one short, pop it back outside. They tried to anyway, but it's knocked out for another corner, and I think Wasion a little bit more ready for that short play than they were the last time. Sure, yeah, they've run that a couple times, and they're not going to get beat on it this time. This one will be sent near post, player on the turf. Ball cleared out of the box. Noah Butcher steps up, sends it back down the right side over everyone's head, and out for a goal kick. And as we noticed, Bakken's, they only had one defender back. I mean, it's it's full send at this point, try to get get this thing knotted back up. And uh, that's what they need is keep this ball trapped in the half, get a couple more opportunities, hopefully put it in the back of the net. This one played down the left side. A little pressure as Vajan back into this game. Make sure you stay tuned for... The second game of this doubleheader as Elida, the host, 
takes on Bluffton, two great programs with a lot of great players. Looking forward to that one, but this one has been a, a treat as well. Wasn't sure it was going to be that way when we saw 3-0 on the scoreboard, but here we are at 3-2. Indians trying to make it 4-2 as Delgado has it in the middle of the field, has it knocked up and away. And here's Smock once again. I mean, again, we, we talked about it multiple times this game. That young man has really given Bakken's the ability to move that ball forward. If he doesn't do that, Wasiya well, might have a chance to put him back in the net. Smock goes airborne, draws the free kick. And Botkins will send some numbers forward. They're trying to wait until they have them in position. Now they will float this one to the edge of the box. Knocked down. Now Vajan has a little bit of space. Sends it up the right side. Out of reach of Delgado. And again, we know it's late game. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't need to score. He just makes sure his team doesn't let another one go in. And he, he might be tired, as we, we spoke about. And so... Just getting that ball up forward and off the foot, you know, out of play. That kind of allows everybody to rest, reset. And here we go, though. Bakken's still applying that pressure that they've done this whole entire second half. And, and you can tell Wasian not too concerned with pushing numbers forward on offense. They have Delgado and Vajin up along that back line as Bakken's sends it in. Maybe a chance. That's knocked down. That was, and nice clearance. That, that was a great turn. I mean, you're talking about a kid facing the wrong direction. He's got a little bit of pressure on him. But again, that defender stay there and to sound defense, and we're back on the counter, ladies and gentlemen. Bajan taking on the defense, plays it down the left side. Nice job by Motter. Under four minutes to play. Motter, big clear. And that ball Motter's played has really allowed Potkins to apply that pressure and hopefully continue to keep putting more pressure to, to, to win this ball and go forward. And here we go again. I mean, another set piece here, see if they get an opportunity to connect up in the middle here. They thought about playing it short, but now they get some numbers into the box. Ball floated, edge of the box, takes a bounce. Now it goes out off of the Indians. So another corner upcoming. Yeah, it looks like Smock might be cramping up as well. I mean. And uh, they were trying to get him to go forward, and he, he was struggling a little bit here. He's, uh, you can see him kind of hurting as he go off, goes off the pitch, and uh, they need him right now. They can get him back in. So 318. Ball floated into the box, knotted up and over. And that clearance will actually stay in. Bakken's will get there first and a big drop as they reset things. It's a real nice touch to find that width and try to spread, spread out Wasion. They got an opportunity on the back post here. You know, it's they just got to get it there and their numbers are there. Wasion's watching the ball right now and they, you know, there's a great opportunity for Bakken's on the back post here if they can work it over this way. Maybe another chance to cross. This one sent toward the goal, but balls are right there to knock it down. And just over two and a half to play now. Another nice challenge right there by Noah Butcher. Indians take it back, and now Delgado has some space. Yeah, that was an absolutely great challenge. That could have got reckless and dangerous pretty quick. And uh, good thing both of them came out nice, clean, no nothing too crazy. And, that, if you're watching on this, what you want right now, just kind of hold the ball in the offensive half and make Bakken's defend. Delgado around one defender. Now, if anyone's gotten a break, it's Delgado because he's been on offense, just kind of standing up at the midfield, and he's got some fresher legs, if you will. Sure. Yes, and if you're watching on, you want to give him the ball and just let him take it to the corner or just as slow as possible move that ball forward. Just keep it away from your net because – it's down here, Bakken's gonna have that opportunity to see if they can find him again. And then again, some space. This time for Torres. Torres up the right side. Torres knocks it off of Botkins. That was Ryland Paul, last to touch. Wasian will take their time. Just as I suspect in the last five minutes, the refs have the opportunity to stop the clock in these moments. So the wasting of time does not happen. And 
You know, they were taking a little long to get that ball back in. Clock starts once again. And here's a cross into the box. He thought maybe they'd just try to hold it in that corner. But instead, now Botkins will have a chance to counter with 105 to go. Oh, here we go here. They're off and running here. Can you play him to the corner? Down the left side, giving chase is Brant Metz. It'll be knocked away by the Indians under a minute. This could, might be a great or last opportunity for Botkins as they, uh, you know, as we get underneath a minute here. We'll see a long throw in. Goes into the box, knotted up in the air, still at the edge of the box. Still dangerous. We saw a goal earlier where the ball was just free in the middle of the box, but it's cleared away. Delgado gives chase. And good sportsmanship there. That's just a hard play. Two teams going at it pretty hard. Nothing wrong there. Oh, yes, indeed. And again, I mean, we're, we're talking gentlemen competing out here, and you just love to see the sportsmanship between the two of them. Now Delgado with 14 seconds left has enough space to at least milk some time Ten, off this clock. Nine, eight, yeah, he just did an seven, excellent job to go six, from right to left on five, and just slow four, this game down to get the three, to get the W for two, them and very one, smart play for zero. them. And, you know, you just love to see the that IQ at this level. Final score, and that will do one, it for we'll this one. Three, three to two years score. A great game for you as we had three first half goals. Or excuse me, 3 0 the score was for Wasion. And Botkin's able to climb back into the game. But alas, it's early in the season. These two teams will have plenty of chances to, to grow and get some more wins under their belts. Yes, as a, as a coaching staff, I'm sure, honestly, both teams are thrilled with what happened. I mean, nobody wants to lose. But as a Botkin's coach, the way we came out that first half kind of maybe a little defeated, you know, a little frustrated with what was happening and the fight to get back in the game. I mean, that just. You, you, you can live off that, you know, and, and Wasion's just happy to get out of here with a W because Bakken's was applying a ton of pressure on him and, and was making it really uncomfortable late in the game. Absolutely. want to thank our sponsor one more time, Charles River, for their sponsorship of the scoreboard. And as always, want to thank you, the viewer, for tuning in to High School Soccer on WOSN. Your final from Elida. Three to two, Wasian knocks off Botkins. Thank you so much. Have a great night, and God bless.